Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with some more AP Physics 1, some rotation and torque problems. And um, as usual, I suggest you pause the video, attempt the problem, and then come back after you've tried the problem. Um, so let's see what we got here. A horizontal uniform rod shown above has a length 0.6 meters and a mass 2 kilograms. The left end of the rod is attached to a vertical support by a frictionless hinge that the rod that allows the rod to swing up or down. The right end of the rod is supported by a cord that makes an angle 30 degrees with the rod and a spring scale of negligible mass measures the tension in the cord. A 0.5 kilogram block is also attached to the right end of the rod. On the diagram below, draw and label all label of all vectors to represent the forces acting on the rod and show each force vector originating from its point of application. So this is definitely a torque problem, right? Because there's going to be some rotation. All right, so let's take a look. We have a uniform rod. It has gravity. So this has force of gravity here. Um, I also am pulling down with this mass down here. We're going to call this a force of gravity. You could technically call it tension from this rope pulling it down, but that's fine. We'll just call it gravity pointing there. And then we have... Um, oops. Sorry. We have um, a tension from the spring scale there acting at this angle 30 degrees. And again, both of these are at the end points here. And then, um, so if this if this is all it was, um, you know, it'd be accelerating to the left. But really, this hinge is, has a reaction force, a hinge force. Now. A common mistake and a very easy thing to do is assume that the force would be horizontal to counteract this tension force. But you actually don't really know the direction of this hinge force. I'm going to suspect it looks like this. Because you don't know if it... This hinge can, can, can push in any direction. So if I push at an angle, it would push back at that angle. So really, this hinge force, you don't really totally know what the direction of it is. I'm going to aim it up. You could theoretically aim it down, but it's probably more likely it's aimed up to counteract these forces here and reduce the tension on on um, on a force of tension. Okay, so those are all the forces. The other thing I want you to note is I applied the the this the, the rod itself had gravity and I acted it at the center of mass. If it's a uniform rod, it always the force acts at the center there, so that's important to note. Okay, so that's those are all the forces. Now we're going to calculate the reading on the spring scale. So you see, in this problem, um, the thing is not rotating or it's not accelerating. This is a statics problem. And so there's two requirements that must be met. The net force is zero and the net torque is zero. Okay. Let us do, um, well, let me explain in principle why the net force equation is not really going to tell you anything. The reason the net force equation, there's really four unknowns if you think about it. There is the tension in the x direction, the tension in the y direction, the the hinge force the, or normal force, however you want to think of it, in the x direction and in the y direction. That's four unknowns. And the net force equation is only going to give me a set of uh, two equations, right? One in the x and one in the y direction. And that's not going to be enough for me to calculate h or t. t. So in principle, you could do this uh, equation, but it won't really help. Let's think about the torques, though. Now, the point of rotation is important to identify when you're doing any rotational problem. And we've been doing a lot of rolling problems recently, but in a statics problem, you got to identify the point of rotation. Even though it's not rotating, it turns out you can actually pick what point of rotation you want. And it's it's best in this problem to pick the point of rotation to be the hinge. This is the point of rotation. Now the point of rotation is going to be used for us to determine all the r vectors that are related to each of these forces and what torque they're doing. Okay, so when we're doing torque, we got to think about uh, direction. I mean, torque has a um, is a vector, so has a direction. We're going to say any torque that causes a rotation counterclockwise will be um, a positive torque and any torque that causes a clockwise rotation will be a uh, negative torque. So each force can contribute a torque. So let's let's go from left to right here. I have the hinge force. 
The hinge force is zero torque because it's acting exactly at the point of rotation. So it doesn't cause any rotation. Remember the torque is um, R cross F or it's R times F times sine theta. This is um, R being the distance from the point of rotation, F being the force applied, and the theta being the angle with respect to each other if they're not perpendicular. Okay, um, so the hinge doesn't apply any torque. Fg, this 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 force here does apply torque because its r vector looks like this, right? That's it. That's the r vector for this force. It's from the point of rotation to where the point is being applied. That's the r vector, and they're already perpendicular to each other. So the torque is just simply the product of this distance and this force. This distance is 0.3 meters, so it's 0.3 meters times the force. Uh, which is 2 kilograms, that's mg, that's 9.8 meters per second squared times 2 kilograms. And this torque is negative because this torque is wanting to rotate it clockwise. It's trying to pull this thing down and rotate it like, like this way, which is negative. Okay. Let's do the other uh, force here. This mass is 0.5 kilogram. The r vector from the point of rotation to the point of force being applied is, is there and they're already perpendicular each other to each other so I'm going to subtract 0.6 meters the distance times 9.8 meters per second squared times um, uh, what is uh, 0.5 kilograms okay and then this is a negative torque because it's also causing it to rotate uh, clockwise. Now the tension, I have the r vector here, but you see the tension is at an angle. I need the portion of the tension vector that's perpendicular to the r vector. So I need this portion, I need this portion right here. Well I'm told that this is theta, so by, um, by from my geometry this is theta, so this part is t sine theta. Does that make sense? Because if this is 30 degrees, then this one's 30 degrees. This is alternate interior angles from geometry. And so if this is 30 degrees, then sine of 30, sine of this would be this over the hypotenuse. So this is T sine theta. So then my equation is plus, and this is a positive torque because it's tending to um, want to cause this thing to, this whole thing to rotate um, counterclockwise. So this is T sine theta, sine 30 degrees. Um, and its distance is 0.6 meters, r times um, the force. And this all has to equal zero. Okay. So um, if I just simply use my calculator to compute what, uh, where did my calculator go? I swear, just on my calculator, and I lost it. Okay. Uh, oh, here it is. Apologies. Um, so 0.3 times 9.8 times 2 plus 0.6 times 9.8 times 0.5. All of this was really negative 8.82 plus uh, t sine of 30 is 1 half. So this is 1 half t times 0.6 equals 0. And so this is 1 half of 0.6 is 0.3. So I have 0.3t, bring this to the other side is 8.82. And so t is equal to 8.82 divided by 0.3. I know for to shorthand I left out the units, but hopefully not. Uh, 29.4 newtons. Okay. So that's what I get for part A. Oh, sorry, that's part B. Uh, part A was just simply drawing the free body diagram. In part C, calculate the magnitude of the force exerted by the hinge on the rod. Okay, so now, now that I know T, the tension, now I can look at the net force. Okay. The net forces have to be equal to zero. But you see, now that I know T, I only have two unknowns, the horizontal X, horizontal Y, and um, I can u then use that to, um, I'll have two equations. So in the x direction, I have h in the x direction has to equal t in the x direction. 
See, the force of tension, the horizontal would be T cosine theta. Okay, those are the only forces horizontal. If, I, if you kind of just think of the blue ones, I know I drew a lot of red stuff. But if you think of, um, let me draw the free body diagram again. I have a hinge here. I have T, and I have FG, and I have another FG down here. We'll call it G1 and G2. Right, so the only X component forces are from the hinge and the tension, so that has to equal that. So the hinge in the X direction is T cosine theta. That's 29.4 cosine 30 degrees. So that's 29.4 times root 3 over 2. And that's 25.46 newtons. And in the Y direction, I have HY plus the tension in the Y direction, which is T sine theta has to equal the sum of these two gravities would be FG1 plus FG2. So HY is just equal, to, if I can bring this T sine theta to the other side, FG1 is um, 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared plus 0.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared minus T, which is 29.4 newtons, times sine of 30 degrees, which is one half. And so H sub Y is the 29.4, oh no, 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 sorry, two times 9.8 plus 0.5 times 9.8 minus 29.4 times one half, that's equal to 9.8 Newtons. Okay, and it ended up being positive, and because it's positive, um, it means that I have this direction, it's, it's, it's going upward. If I had it downward and um, I found it was negative, then that would have told me it was actually going positive. Okay, but what they're asking is the magnitude of the force exerted by the hinge on the rod. I have the hinge force in the x direction. If you think about it this way, I know it's 25.46, and I know the vertical component is 9.8. To find the magnitude of the total component, I could do Pythagorean theorem, so h is equal to the square root of hx squared plus hy squared. I just square each of these, add them up, and take the square root. So square root of 9.8 squared plus 25.46 squared. I get h is 27.28 newtons. All right, and that's it. All right, um, yeah, hope you found that helpful. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.